Hi, I'm Andrew Watson. Thanks for tuning into my weekly guitar blog. It is Saturday, May 14th, 2011. And if you're not familiar with the guitar blog, what we do here is we answer questions that are from my guitar blog website at andrewwasson.com. Now there's some questions I want to go through today, starting with Alex's question. He's from Minnesota. He wrote in saying, how do we combine influences from different styles of music to form new and more interesting musical concepts? Uh, that's the first part of the question. The second part of the question he has is, uh, he says here, is there any advice that you have or an approach that you take when writing to add new styles and ideas? Well, let's start off with how to develop styles that blend and take from other different stylistic approaches and put them into our music. So what I'm going to do is just come up with a pretty straightforward chord progression here. I'm going to be in the key of A major, and I'll do a simple uh, one, five, four progression. So let's say we have something like this. Now, if that was our tune and I wanted to say blend in a new stylistic approach in the song and have it be, I don't know, maybe perhaps jazzy, I could do it in several ways. I could have a really strong anchored intro that basically plays the triads that I was just doing. And then once the verse kicks in, I can mellow things out perhaps with some seventh quality chords and bring about that nice jazzy style. So here comes the verse. So I took the same chord changes, but I just turned them into seventh chords and I got a jazzy style out of that. So that's one way that you can do it. You know, as you move through sections, you can change section by section how the feel is going. Now, of course, in a song, you don't want to change it up too much because then it'll start seeming a little bit strange, perhaps. Uh, one other element, though, I want to talk about is blending two-part guitar concepts over top of one another. Now let me show you what I mean by this. Let's say I have my main progression again. And that's recorded, let's say, on one guitar track. I can come in on another underlying guitar track and produce some other kind of style idea. Let's say I went with more of a Caribbean feel, so I might have sort of like the sort of reggae shots you know, underneath that. So remember, there's one guitar track that's performing this. Okay, and then I'll have another guitar track under that shooting some uh, Caribbean ideas into the mix there. So that can be in an underlying track. You might hear these kinds of influences in music maybe uh, from the old days of the police, uh, maybe even a sort of UB40 type of sound. But the idea is, is that you have two layered tracks. One is doing one type of stylistic element and the other track does another. Now you have to keep in mind that again, with styles, a lot of it also depends on the rhythm that you're employing. So let's say if the rhythm is very uh, syncopated in triplets, it probably is some kind of shuffle feel or maybe a swing feel. Uh, that would be something like maybe a blues type of an approach like this. So you have that one and a two and a shuffle feel. So that's going to bring about a style right there, and that can be something to think about in terms of applying your style changes, is a lot of it has to do with rhythm. Let me give you one other quick uh, example of this. Let's say you wanted to have some kind of a funky feel as an approach in your piece. Well, that's going to be primarily 16th note driven. So. see it here there it's a lot of 16th note ideas one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a get the idea it's a lot of 16ths are bringing in both that funk feel and you also get some of that stuff in the old soul and r&b sounds as well so that kind of covers a lot of information, but to get to the end of the question there about do I have any methods or approaches that I use? Well, basically the concept and the applications of the rhythms is my main approach. I'll change up the rhythm feel and then I'll generate the kind of stylistic approach that I want. 
Um, songwriting is very creative and it's um, built, in my opinion, a lot on inspiration. So you feel really inspired about something, sit down, you try to start belting out some chord concepts and maybe some harmony, maybe some melodic ideas start coming to mind. So the evolution sort of begins there. So I don't have any kind of an approach really that I have that's uh, mathematical or scientific in how it all comes together. It's just basically uh, luck of the draw. Sometimes you sit down when you're inspired and you come up with some pretty cool ideas. And sometimes you can be somewhat inspired, sit down and you get zip, zero, nothing. <laughs> so it just depends on what happens, you know, how the, uh, you know, it all, I guess the whole uh, essence of it comes together. But uh, let's take a look at the next question coming our way. Our next question comes to us from Lewis. He says here, I'm 14 and I'm trying to learn and maximize the use of scales. I'd like to ask you what approach I should take in order to be more creative. Also, I'm not sure what type of mode or scale I should use. I'm into gospel and rock genres of music. What should I learn and in what order? Uh, well, maximizing the use of scales, that's kind of an, an interesting statement. I mean, you know, you, in order to get good at scales, you need to be both physically competent at them. You know, let's say if you wanted to play the scale, you have to have it to a good enough level where you're not thinking about it consciously. It's, very, it's just very easy to do it. Uh, you know, if you need it in D minor, you know, in, in the middle of the neck, you should be able to play a few of those patterns without thinking very hard, you know, and they should just basically flow out of you. And that takes a lot of practice. You have to sit there with a metronome and drill on them and do exercises at fast paces. I think that's a real plus, you know, put, put a metronome at like 100 beats per minute and try to play 16th notes, you know, have the thing clicking away there and then try to go 16s, which is groups of four over every click. So one E and, sorry, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and try to match the uh, the pace exactly to the metronome. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two. And as, as soon as that starts coming together where it feels really fluid, then turn the metronome up faster or perhaps even turn it down and try to do other paces, like maybe do uh, 16th note uh, triplet based ideas or maybe even 32nd notes. But that kind of drilling work, it really makes the scale quite unconscious and you don't have to think about it very much. And you know, it's just, it's just basically your mind can be 100% on music and making lines up with the scale. So I think that what you may need to do is start studying a lot about harmony. I, I find that very uh, popular as a, as a problem almost with students is they study a lot of the physical aspects of scales, but they don't go too deep into how the harmony relates. In other words, how the chords all interact around the key that they are in. So let's say uh, perhaps, I don't know, that we're maybe in the key of G minor. And if you don't know the chords that are found in G minor, you're gonna have a problem executing G minor scale ideas because in the key, you'll have different movements of chords that'll bring about different sounds. And if your ear can really lock into those sounds and I guess in, for, for lack of a, any kind of better concept with it, if you can quickly memorize the sound of the chord movements because you're well aware of how those chords interact, then you're gonna play better. You're gonna execute your scales and, I, and scalar ideas much better. And that's basically the trick to it. Now, in order to be creative, that is another tough one. We're getting a lot of questions uh, about creativity. It's, you have to be inspired for one thing and you have to have lots to draw off of. If you've never really studied very many other guitar players' solos or you don't know very many songs, you're gonna have a problem with creativity. You know, I, I'll never forget an article that I read with Elton John where he was talking about when in, in the early days when he was working with songs and, and doing songwriting and composing, arranging his pieces that he was writing at those times, he was grabbing a lot of other music by people and organizing it, and writing it out again, looking at how the verses and choruses operated, and he was gleaning concepts off of those songs and using the ideas of how they did things in those songs to formulate his own creative work in his own pieces. So he might have taken, you know, a piece of a song by a band of that era, maybe like, you know, Chicago or something, and he might have taken something like that and mixed it with an idea that came through by way of maybe a Pink Floyd tune and, and so on and so forth. So it's about taking elements that have occurred in other songs and in other styles and artists, that of, sorry, in other music that you like by other artists and amalgaming them all together and formulating so they actually create um, interesting ideas that you quite like and that they flow and interact very easily. Now, 
getting them to flow is the really, really tough thing. You have to, it, it, it takes time and it takes work and effort. And sometimes it doesn't happen in a day or even a couple of days. Sometimes you gotta go through, write a few sections of a song and then walk away from it and maybe four or five days later you can come back and be inspired. Uh, you know, I've kind of heard stories about people waking up in the middle of the night and having an entire verse for a, a song they've been trying to write for, you know, a couple of years or something. And I, I would imagine that does hap happen to people because I've had similar kinds of experiences myself where, you know, I'll be driving along, come up with an idea and rush home, grab the guitar and try to f make the idea into reality that I heard, you know, in messing around uh, in my mind. Uh, that was obviously very abstract when it was in my head, but I'll rush home, grab the guitar, put the idea to work, and it might be a melodic idea, it could be a series of chords, but both these elements of, uh, I should actually uh, say not two elements of, uh, of both uh, melody and harmony, they're important, but also rhythm of course too. Those three areas have to really come together and you have to have a lot of understanding about them and you have to have a lot of control over how you're able to uh, do and, and achieve musical ideas with them physically because of course there's always that you know thing holding you back that you're not physically able to perform these things, which kind of gets to the front end of uh, the question, which was sort of about you know how to practice the scales and get good at them. So there's lots of work there to go through, and it does take time, you know, but it's so well worth it because you're able to tap into your creativity so much easier when you really understand the building blocks of all this information. So now let's head over to the next question. Okay, our final question is from Jay, and he wrote in with just a one sentence, uh, short and sweet question here. He's asking, are the arpeggios the harmonized major scale in one position? So are the arpeggios the harmonized major scale in one position? Well, they can be harmonized in one position. So you could take, uh, let's say, uh, A major, and you could go and harmonize them in a position. So there's the root, the A major. And then you can just go off of the second degree, the B. Then you could go off the third degree, which is uh, C sharp, and the B, by the way, was minor. The C sharp, by the way, will also be minor. The fourth degree would be major. So I am harmonizing them, and I am in position. But you also have to remember that you can play something in many different positions. So I could play an arpeggio, let's say even in first position. I could play all those exact same notes in fourth position. And uh, I think I'm kind of out of uh, positions for that particular A, but you know, let's say if I moved over to a C, I could play it in three different positions. Here's one of them, here's another. Here's another. So now I've got three different positions, all the exact same notes I've just basically gone across the neck into different uh, areas, but I'm doing the exact same tones. So this is why you've got to spend just gobs and gobs and gobs of time practicing your arpeggios, practicing your scales, practicing your chord shapes, do the harmonized scales across the whole neck, do it in multiple positions, and really gain control over the whole neck. Because once you have this down, then those arpeggios are very easy to control. You can pretty much just do anything you want with them. You can come up with very cool lines. You can interlock them along the whole neck. Uh, last uh, uh, time I did the guitar blog, I showed a long the neck uh, minor seven uh, arpeggio run. I could do the same thing with a major seven. And I just did a G major seven run all across the neck there, starting on the third fret of the sixth string G. Went through the major seven. But to take it in a more lateral sense, I'm jumping from second position over into fourth position. Then I'm jumping into the seventh position. That's a really fun one to move and it's pretty much the exact same shape all along the guitar neck. There's so many ways that you can move your arpeggios and stack them on top of one another and get really cool horizontal movement along the neck. So I'd really stress that the arpeggio thing gets done in a, a very methodical way, get it in positions and move it along the neck. And remember that arpeggios are 
a broken chord. I mean, we were playing through actually a chord type of major seven. But when you strum a chord, all the notes ring out and bleed over one another. When you play an arpeggio, it's very, it's very dut, 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 you know, one note at a time, it's very punchy. And it's a lot in the direction almost of scales where you're kind of playing single note line concepts instead of, uh, you know, you're strumming and basically creating larger harmony with the chords. So hopefully that helps out uh, your, with your arpeggio question. You can do them all over the neck. They're certainly not limited to position. And uh, once you get good at them and you're able to do some really cool lateral runs with them, they're a very excellent idea to be able to pop in while you're doing some solos and doing your lead playing. Well, that's about all the time I have for today. So I wanna say thanks again for watching and for sending in all the great questions. Really appreciate it. Have yourself a great week and I'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now.